Hello everyone, I'm Claire. I will be reporting about Examining Lydia Hall's Care, Core, Cure Model Using Allagood and Tomey's Theory Evaluation Tool My topics are The Background of the Theorist Major Concepts of Care, Core, Cure The Care, Core, Cure Model and its Relationship how the theory directs critical thinking in nursing practice and nursing process. Let's go to the background of the theorists. Lydia Hall was born on September 21, 1906, in New York City as Lydia Elois Williams. She was the eldest child of Louis V. Williams and Anna Ketterman Williams, and was named after her maternal grandmother. Her brother, Henry, was several years younger. At a young age, her family decided to move to York, Pennsylvania, where her father was a general practice physician. Lydia Hall graduated from York Hospital School of Nursing in 1927 with a diploma in nursing. However, she felt as if she needed more education. She entered Teachers College at Columbia University in New York and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in public health nursing in 1932. After several years in clinical practice, she resumed her education and received a master's degree in the teaching of natural life sciences from Columbia University in 1942. Later, she pursued a doctorate and completed all of the requirements except for the dissertation. Aside from being a nurse, Lydia Hall also managed to balance her time in writing. In the 1960s, she authored 21 publications and many articles regarding the Loeb Center and her long-term care and chronic disease control theories. Her work was presented in Nursing, What Is It?, in The Canadian Nurse. In 1969, it was discussed in the Loeb Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation in the International Journal of Nursing Studies. In her innovative work at the Loeb Center, Hall argued that a need exists in society to provide hospital beds grouped into units that focus on the delivery of therapeutic nursing. The low plan has been seen in many ways as similar to what later emerged as primary nursing. Nursing theory, in line with Lydia Hall, is nothing short of revolutionary. In the 1960s, she put down, in her own simple words, her thoughts about nursing. She did not consider herself a nurse theorist, but instead talked about her transparent thoughts and remarkable nursing care ideas as she learned them over the years. These lead to the development of her care, cure, core theory, also known as the three C's of Lydia Hall. Let's proceed to the care, core, care concepts. The major concepts of care, core, cure. The individual. The individual human who is 16 years of age or older and past the acute stage of long-term illness focuses on nursing care in Hall's work. The source of energy and motivation for healing is the individual care recipient, not the health care provider. Hall emphasizes the individual's importance as unique, capable of growth and learning, and requiring a total person approach. Health. Health can be inferred as a state of self-awareness with a conscious selection of optimal behaviors for that individual. Hall stresses the need to help the person explore the meaning of his or her behavior to identify and overcome problems through developing self-identity and maturity. society and environment. The concept of society or environment is dealt with concerning the individual. Hall is credited with developing Loeb Center's concept because she assumed that the hospital environment during treatment of acute illness creates a difficult psychological experience for the ill individual. Loeb Center focuses on providing an environment that is conducive to self-development. In such a setting, the focus of the nurse's action is the individual. Any actions taken concerning society or the environment are to assist the individual in attaining a personal goal. 
nursing. Nursing is identified as participating in the care, core, and cure aspects of patient care. According to the care, cure, core theory that is sometimes called the three C's of Lydia Hall, the patient is comprised of three interrelated parts. The cord is the person, the cure is the illness and treatment, and the care is the body. The three components are represented by interlocking circles that vary in size according to the condition of the patient. The care circle. According to the theory, nurses are focused on performing the noble task of nurturing patients. This circle solely represents the role of nurses and is focused on performing the task of nurturing patients. Nurturing involves using the factors that make up the concept of mothering, care and comfort of the person, and provide for teaching learning activities. The care circle defines a professional nurse's primary role, such as providing bodily care for the patient and helping the patient complete such basic daily biological functions as eating, bathing, elimination, and dressing. When providing this care, the nurse's goal is the comfort of the patient. Moreover, the nurse's role also includes educating patients and helping the patient meet any needs he or she is unable to meet alone. This presents the nurse and patient with an opportunity for closeness. As closeness develops, the patient can share and explore feelings with the nurse. The core circle. The core, according to Hall's theory, is the patient receiving nursing care. The core has goals set by him or herself, rather than by any other person and behaves according to their feelings and values. This involves the therapeutic use of self and is shared with other members of the health team. This area emphasizes the patient's social, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual needs concerning family, institution, community, and the world. This can help the patient verbally express feelings regarding the disease process and its effects by using the reflective technique. Through such expression, the patient can gain self-identity and further develop maturity. Motivations are discovered through the process of bringing into awareness the feelings being experienced. With this awareness, the patient can now make conscious decisions based on understood and accepted feelings and motivation. Last but not the least, the cure circle. As explained in this theory, the cure is nursing, which involves the administration of medications and treatments. Hall explains in the model that the nurse shares the cure circle with other health professionals, such as physicians or physical therapists. In short, these are the interventions or actions geared toward treating the patient for whatever illness or disease he or she is suffering from. During this aspect of nursing care, the nurse is an active advocate of the patient. The three interlocking circles may change in size and overlap concerning the patient's phase in the disease process. A nurse functions in all three circles, but to different degrees. For example, during the acute phase, the cure circle will be the largest, while the care circle will be biggest during rehabilitation and follow-up phases. Lastly, the core circle will be the largest during long-term care. Let's check how this theory directs critical thinking in nursing practice and nursing process. In nursing practice, Hall's theory closely resembles to the nursing model of primary care. Hall's concept of nurses being accountable and responsible for their own practice are pertinent and applicable ideas. Concerns for this concept demonstrate support for her theory. Focused on personalized nursing care rather than merely routine care. In nursing process, this theory may be applied in assessment 
planning and implementation of patient care. These are the weaknesses of the theory. It was stated in the theory that the age requirement should be 16 years of age or older. Though some critiques said that it is not applicable to pediatrics, but in my opinion, it is still useful to small children with some collaborative help from other members of the health team concerning his or her social, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual need. Excludes prevention of illness and health maintenance. The concept of a patient aggregate such as having families and communities as the focus of nursing practice, was not tackled. It is purely on the individual himself. Although the role of the family or the community within the patient's environment was modestly discussed. While studying this theory, I realized that I was not applying it well in my personal and professional life in the present. It reminded me how to properly communicate with everyone around me, especially to patients whom I'm encountering every day. I was so used in approaching patients in not so therapeutic way in quite some time. I admit, I am not a good listener and I easily run out of patience talking to someone who I think is too stubborn to heed my requests, either as a nurse, a family, or a friend. I noticed what I lack in terms of effective communication. As mentioned in the core circle, it includes the therapeutic use of self to relate with the patient. The use of reflective technique help the patient verbally express feelings. The motivation and energy necessary for healing exist within the patient. At the moment, I am trying to apply this aspect to improve my communication skills by providing a therapeutic conversation to others in order to gain trust and help promote healing within themselves. In relation to my profession as a nurse, I've learned that I've been using this theory in some cases, for instance, in care circle, taking clients' vital signs, assisting the elderly and the physically challenged in walking and sitting, and offering a comfortable environment as my independent nursing functions. While in cure circle, administering of oral or parenteral meds as per doctor's order or approval. These are some of my dependent nursing functions. Lastly, in core circle, interdependently, there are instances that I have to work with social workers in order to assess further. Lydia Hall once said, to look at and listen to self is often too difficult without the help of a significant figure, nurturer, who has learned how to hold up a mirror and sounding board to invite the behavior to look and listen to himself. If he accepts the invitation, he will explore the concerns in his acts. As he listens to his exploration through the reflection of the nurse, he may uncover in sequence his difficulties, the problem area, his problem, and eventually the threat which is dictating his out-of-control behavior.